sa isang chemical reaction, lagi bang nangyayari na lahat ng mga reagents na ginagamit ng isang chemical reactions ay napupunta lahat sa reactants? Sa palagay mo, lahat kaya ng halimbawa, dalawang product pinag-combine at nakapunang panibagong product. Lahat kaya niyo, mga products sa yon ay napunta lahat sa naging result. Well, ito po yung pag-aaralan po natin para sa... Welcome to Sir Fox Learning Channel. Uh, today, I would like to present to you about limiting reactants and the amount of products. So, week 6 po ito for physical science para po sa mga grade 11 distance learners. Okay? Kung bago ka sa channel na ito, huwag mong kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-hit ang notification bell all para updated ka sa mga susunod ko pong video lessons. Tara, samahan niyo akong panuorin ang video nito. Happy learning everyone! Okay. For today's video, para po sa ating mga senior high school distance learners or taking physical science, nasa week 6 na po tayo about limiting reactants and the amount of products formed. Our target here first is to use stoichiometric calculation to determine excess and limiting reactants in a chemical reaction and then explain why. So how you will explain you will explain why there is a limit or there is an excess reactance. And then, calculate theoretical yields of products formed in reaction that involve limiting reagents. So, bago po natin ipakita kung paano nga ba nangyayari itong pro, paano nangyayari, nangyayari yung process po dito, balikan po muna natin itong mga key terms na gagamitin po natin for this subject. When we say stoichiometry, it is a branch of chemistry that establishes mole and mass relationships between reactants and or products in a chemical reaction to determine desired quantitative data, branch of chemistry, which establishes mole and mass relationships between reactants and products. Okay, take note for that. When we say excess reagent, it refers to a reactant that is not, take note, that is not used up when the reactant is finished. However, when we say limiting reagent, it is a reagent that is completely used up in a chemical reaction, yung nagamit sa isang chemical reaction limiting reagent. A chemical reaction is a process that leads to the chemical transformation of one set of chemical substances to another. So, in a chemical reaction, yan po yung proseso bakit nagkakaroon ng transformation yung isang, yung isang substance from one form to another. And it's all, it always occur para mag-produce ng panibagong substances. Sa isang chemical reaction, syempre yung meron niyang reactant, later ipapakita po ko sa inyo saan ba doon yung reactant, saan doon yung product. Meron niyang reactant and merong product. Pag sinabi po nating reactant, it is substance that is present at the start of a chemical reaction. However, pag sinabi naman po nating product, are substances that are produced in the reactant. Mayroon pang isang term, reagent, substance, or compound added. Yung, yung nandun sa reactant is the reagent. 
kung ano yung mga reactant which are compound added to a system to cause a chemical reaction. So yung inilalagay mo sa reactant, usually two or three or four sometimes, ang tawag po dun is reagent. Added to test if a reaction occurs. Okay? Okay. In a chemical reaction, sa isang chemical reaction, Mayroong dalawang parts yan. Yung dalawang parts na yan ay tinatawag na reactants and products. So, this is our chemical reaction. At ito, ang tawag nito ay reactant. At ito naman yung product. Okay. Nasaan dyan yung reagent? Itong hydrogen at itong oxygen ay ang tawag dyan is reagent. Okay? Sa chemical reaction, during the chemical reaction, reactants are not sometimes combined or mixed in exact ratio. Ang nangyayari, yung ibang reactants ay nag exist Ang iba naman ay nagagamit. Ngayon, itong mga reactants na, na nagagamit ay yun yung tinatawag na reagent as defined a while ago. However, yung mga hindi nagagamit, tinatawag na excess reagent. Sa pamagitan ng stoichiometry, Diba kanina, dinefine po natin yung stoichiometry, which is a branch of chemistry that, that establishes mole and mass relationship between reactants and products para ma-determine po natin yung desired quantitative data. Okay? Okay. In stoichiometry, we will always start with balancing equation. So, for instance, ito yung ating chemical reaction. Chem reaction. Let's check if the reaction is balanced. So, again, kanina, may dalawa tayong parts ng chemical reaction, the reactant and products. So, titingnan po natin kung balance yung reaction. Paano po natin titingnan? Siyempre, para ma-establish natin kung tam balance ba, tinan po natin isa-isa. So, ano yung mga atoms na present in the reactants? So, you have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, sa reactant and sa product. <clears throat> Bilangin po natin, ilang carbon meron sa reactant? Meron kayong tatlo. Ilang hydrogen? Walo. Ilang oxygen? Dalawa. Sa product, ilang, uh, ilang carbon? Isa lang. Ilang oxygen? Ay, anong sunod? Ilang hydrogen? Dalawa. Ilang oxygen? Dalawa plus isa. Tatlo. So, ibig sabihin, hindi balance yung ating chemical equation yung ating chemical equation is hindi balance. Kailangan po natin, to balance sa chemical equation, kailangan po natin maglagay ng coefficient. So, para makita po natin na talagang tama yung coefficient, ilalagay po natin, isa-isahin po natin bawat atom. So, yun. Magsimula tayo sa carbon, sunod ang hydrogen, sunod ang oxygen. Umpisan po natin. Carbon, 3 sa reactant, 1 sa product. In other words, saan ka maglalagay ng coefficient? Sa reactant or sa product? Sagot. Sa product. Eh kung may trick ka dito, dito may isa ka lang, ilan yung kailangan mong coefficient? So, 3. 
Ayan. 3 times 1 equals 3. So, pantay na ang yung carbon. Next, hydrogen. Walo ang hydrogen sa react sa, sa reactant. Dito, dalawa lang. Anong gagawin? Saan ka maglalagay ng coefficient? Possible di possibly dito. Or probably dito. Ano yung pwedeng coefficient para pumantay yung number of hydrogen mo dito? 2. May dalawa nga na. Ano yung pwedeng i-multiply sa 2 na magiging 8? That is... 4. 4 times 2 equals 8. So, balance na ang iyong hydrogen. Next, oxygen. Sa reactant, dalawa. Sa product, tatlo. Kasi 1 at saka 2. So, ibig sabihin, though, ito pala, di ba, naglagay ka dito ng coefficient. Imumultiply mo to dyan, imumultiply mo rin dito. Kaya mangyari, meron kang 4 na oxygen plus 2 equals 8 na to. Naging ah, two, 4 plus 2 Tapos ito, dito rin pala Ayan, ito dito So mangyari, ang oxygen mo dito is 4 Dito naman ang oxygen mo is 3 times 2 6 So meron ka ng 10 dito na oxygen Ibig sabihin, kailangan saan ka maglalagay ng coefficient? Dito, dalawa lang. Ito, 10. Dito ka ngayon. Ano yung pwede mong ilagay na coefficient na kapag multiply mo by 2, magiging 10? Ano? 5. Diyan tayo maglalagay. So, therefore, ang chemical equation mo na ngayon is C3 H8 plus 5 O Two results to four H two O plus three C O two. So ito na yung balance equation mo. Kita natin ayan. Yan na yung balance equation mo. Okay. Okay, let's find the limiting reaction. Halimbawa, mayroon po tayong chemical reaction na aluminum reacted with chloride resulting to uh, di-aluminum chloride. So, anong sinabi natin kanina? In stoichiometry, kailangan balance yung reaction, both sides, in the reactants and product. So, balance ba? Meron kang isang aluminum dito, meron kang dalawang chlorine, dito naman may dalawa kang aluminum, meron kang tatlong chlorine. So, unbalanced. In other words, kailangan mo mag-add ng coefficient. Unahin po muna natin ang aluminum. Ilan yung aluminum na kailangan mo? 2. So, maglalagay ka ng coefficient dito kasi isa lang. So, that is 2. Sa chlorine, dito, dalawa, dito tatlo, unbalanced. Saan ka pwede maglagay ng coefficient? E ito kasi, pag naglagay ka dito ng coefficient, you will multiply this to aluminum at sa chlorine. So, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon na dito ng 6 na chlorine. So, ito, dalawa. In other words, ano yung pwedeng i-multiply na coefficient dito sa chlorine sa left side? sa reactants na pwede maging 6 that is 3 so therefore ang maging equation mo na is 2EL plus 3CL2 resulting to 2AL CL3 now Let's assume na itong aluminum po natin dito ay mayroon po siyang mass na 
180 grams. At ang ating chlorine, meron po siyang mas na 4.25 grams. Paano po natin madedetermine yung kanyang limiting reaction? So, we will convert grams to mole. Iko-convert po natin itong grams sa moles. Para makita po natin yung limiting reactant. So, paano yan? Moles of aluminum. Ito muna. EL is equal to 2.80 grams times for every 1 mole of EL how many grams? Doon po natin makikita sa periodic table sa kanyang mass number that is equivalent to 26.98 grams of aluminum. Cancel mo yan. Ang magiging result is equal to 1.04 times 10 negative 1 moles of aluminum. Paano nangyari? 2.8 times 1 divided by 26.98 is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 1 for aluminum. For chloride, so you have moles of Cl2 is equal to 4.25 grams times in 1 mole of Cl2 is equal to 70.90 grams of Cl2 sampo na ko yung 70.90 tinan mo ulit yung mass number ng chlorine sa periodic table since dalawa ipag-a-add mo yung dalawang o i-multiply mo by 2 kaya nakakuha ka ng 70.90 so cancel out yung unit measure matitira na lang is small 4.25 times 1 divided by 70 it will result to 5.99 times 10 negative 2 mole of Cl2. Okay? Ayan. Ayan po yan. Kakasunod. Now, using the ratio kanina, 2 moles of aluminum over 3 moles of Cl2 is equal to 0.67 moles of aluminum per 1 mole of Cl2. Now, if we will assume na yung aluminum, yung aluminum po natin na reagent is the limiting reagent para malaman po natin kung ga, uh, gano'ng kadami yung chlorine ang kailangan para mag-react sa aluminum, ko-compute po natin in this manner. 
<coughs> for us to determine the number of chlorine. Yung result po natin kanina na 1.04 times 10 to the power of negative 1 moles of aluminum times yung expression po natin na 3 moles of chlorine over 2 moles of aluminum. So this will result to 1.56 1.56 times 10 negative 1 moles of chlorine moles of chlorine ibig sabihin yan base sa computation we need, kailangan po natin ng 1.56 na chlorine, moles of chlorine. Kung ang ating reagent, limiting reagent is aluminum, para mag-react, kailangan po natin ng 1.56 na chlorine, moles of chlorine. Now, since ang ating chlorine kanina is 5 point, ibig sabihin ito, one, at least 1.56. Ang chlorine po natin kanina is 5.99 which is uh, less than dito kasi 5.99 times 10 negative 2 mas mababa kaysa 1.56 our cal yung calculations po na lumabas po natin dito nagsasabi na kailangan po natin uh, we we would run out of chlorine before we fully reacted all the aluminum. So, kailangan po natin magdagdag pa ng chlorine para mag-react yung aluminum. Therefore, itong 1.56 somehow is our limiting reagent. Okay? Thank you for watching for this video. Sana nakatulong po ito sa inyo. Kung ikaw ay bago, please subscribe, like, and share this video. Marami pong salamat. Happy learning everyone.